Okay, this lesson gonna kind of be a little bit like a puzzle. Um, we're going to be doing some decoding of encoding. Um, we've cracked open memory, and in memory we have found these eight bytes, and we're told that they have been encoded in UTF-8. Now, if you remember, UTF-8 has five ways, five ways of being of, of, well, of starting any byte. So each one of these bytes, you're going to see one of these five ways. Um, first of all, if it starts with a zero, that means it's, well, started to put down 7-bit, which makes sense, but it is one byte UTF-8. All right, now the one byte, that first zero, takes up one of the bits. So we've got seven bits left over. So if we have anything from zero to, zero to seven bits, any Unicode, character, Unicode code point to represent with zero to seven bits, you're gonna find it in that one. If it starts with a one, one, zero, that means it's two byte UTF-8. All right, now 110, that takes up three bits of the first byte. So what you've got is three bits, and then the remaining five bits are the first five bits of our Unicode code point. The remaining bits are going to be found in the next byte that comes. 1110, this is a three byte UTF-8, and that is going to give us, well, Four bits are going to be taken up with this 1110, and then we have the next four bits are going to give us the first four bits of our Unicode code point, and then the two bytes that follow that, that's where the remaining bits are going to be found. Then we also have 11110. This is four byte UTF-8. All right. Now, First byte, we've got five bits taken up with this pattern, so the remaining three bits will be the first three bits of our Unicode code point. The remaining bits of the code point are going to be found in the three bytes that follow that. Now, there's one more that's not showing up here, and that is the, well, let's see if I can find some room to write this. Let's just go ahead and write it up here. One zero. One zero is the second third or fourth byte of one of these guys, right? So, there are these, these five ways are the way you're going to see a byte start. And so we'll just start with the most significant one and we'll see, okay, does it match one of these patterns? So, starting with this first byte, one, 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 zero. So those five bytes match these five bytes. So that means that we've got a four byte Unicode, or excuse me, a four byte UTF-8. So this byte, this byte, this byte, and this byte are all part of the same Unicode code point being represented in UTF-8. Now, the second, third, and fourth byte of those, well, they all have to start with one zero. Do they? Because if they don't, we've got an error. One zero, one zero, one zero. So that looks right. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, this one, two, three, four, five bits, which identify it as a four byte UTF-8, these bits are our data. Those are the first three bits of our data. Now, this byte starts with the first two bits being one zero, which means the remaining six bits, that is the next six bits of our Unicode code point. Got the one zero here, these next six bits, there you go, that is our ne the next six bits of our Unicode code point, and then we have the one zero here, and so those are the bits. All right, now, Let's see if we can do a little board management here. Um, so the actual package being carried by that four byte UTF-8 value is zero, zero, zero from here. And then we concatenate the zero, one, 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 one. 
and then we concatenate the 001101, and then we concatenate the 001110, all right? So this is actually, in binary, the code point. Let's see what that is in hex. So we start on the right-hand side, we break this up into its nibbles, right? And it should look something like that, right? So we've got zero, those four bits are a hexadecimal one, those four bits are a hexadecimal F, these four bits are a hexadecimal three, these four bits are a hexadecimal four, these four bits are a hexadecimal E. So this is the Unicode, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the Unicode format. We'll, we'll leave off this zero here. Well, we could, we could add it. So it's zero, one, F, three, four, E, okay? And if we do a quick search on that, we're going to see that that is actually an emoji. Okay. What emoji is it? Well, turns out it's an apple. There you go. An apple. <laughs> right. Now, that takes care of the first four bytes. What about this guy right here? Well, this guy right here, it looks like it starts with a zero. Since it starts with a zero, this UTF-8 byte stands by itself as a single byte. Now, if you remember, if it starts with a zero, it matches up with ASCII. And so this ASCII value is, well, like the old 1960s ASCII. And if we look up, and in fact, let's just go ahead and write this down. Uh, so the ASCII value, the 7-bit ASCII value is 01010111, which is, well, UTF notation is going to give us a four-digit hexadecimal value. So it's U plus 00. zero. These four bits right there, it's broken up. And let's just go ahead and put a leading zero here. So this is a hexadecimal two, and this right here is a hexadecimal B. So a two B. Now, do a search on U plus zero zero two B, and you're gonna come up with the Unicode code point for that guy. Turns out it is a plus. All right. What about the next guy? Well, that takes care of, and, and I didn't do my, my bracket here, so there is our Unicode code point. This guy right here, what does it start with? Which of these patterns does it start with? Well, it turns out it starts with the pattern 110. This is the only pattern that matches. So it is a two byte, which means that this byte and this byte together make up a UTF-8 character, all right, or an encoding. Well, the first three bits are the pattern, which means the remaining four or five bits. So the first three bits are that, that pattern that identifies, that is the identifier that identifies how many bytes long this UTF-8 encoding is. So the remaining five bits are actually our, well, the, the first five bits of the encoding. Now this guy, because it's two bytes long and this is the second byte, it has to start with one zero or there's an error. So that does start with one zero. So these remaining six bits, that is our UT, that is part of our Unicode character. So let's go ahead and copy down all, what do we have down here? There's six and five, so all, of, all 11 of our bits. So it's, uh, we'll go zero, one, 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 one. That's from here. And then the six bits, all zeros. All right. Now, let's break this guy up. Starting on the right-hand side, we break this into nibbles. So there's one nibble. There's another nibble. We'll add a leading zero to make it a, a four nibble, four bits for every nibble. So this guy right here, that is three. So we make this U plus zero. And so this is a three. This... 1100, that is C, 0000, zero, zero, zero that is 0. So, 0, 3, C, 0. Do a quick search on, uh, just, just search on U plus 03C0, zero, zero, and you'll find out it is 
the lowercase pi, all right? We've got one more character, one more byte to, de to decode here. This one starts with a zero, so once again, we have this one byte UTF-8. So these seven bits, this is our seven bit ASCII, or the Unicode, code point, and that is 01000001. We go ahead and put our leading zero here, divide this into nibbles, and we have our Unicode code point, that is 21. So 0021. What is 0021 in map two? Turns out it's an exclamation point. So, I'm sorry. I just, I had to come up with something, right? So, we've got these eight bytes here. The first four bytes are the Unicode uh, code point for the emoji apple. The next byte, there was a single byte, which mapped to the Unicode code point for plus. Then we have the next two bytes, which happen to represent the Unicode code point for pi. And then the last byte, which is an exclamation point. There you go. So, that gives us the ability to go back and forth between the code points and UTF-8 encoding. Key thing is, is this piece right here allows us to distinguish the, the points. Now, real quick, something that's really cool about UTF-8 is that if I somehow like lost some bytes and I started and I picked up right here, I would automatically know that I have got, in, I've, I've landed in the middle of a sequence because it starts with one zero and I know one zero is one of the bytes trailing an initial byte. So all I have to do is keep reading and looking for one zero one zero and as soon as I get the next byte that does not start with one zero, I know I've resynced back up, all right? Second thing is, remember that these different number of bytes are for code points with different numbers of significant bits. The previous lesson talked about that, how we have, um, you know, how if one byte gives us patterns up to seven bits long. If you can't fit it in seven bits, you can't use one byte. Two bytes gives us from eight bits up to 11 bits long, right? So we had the two bytes right here. So one, two, so we had the one, one, zero, which identifies two bytes. And then we had one, two, three, four, five. Then we had the two bits for the second byte, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 bits, all right? If we can't fit it in 11 bits, we have to go to the next size. The next size, three bytes, gives us the ability to represent 12 bits up to 16 bits. So you have two of these trailing bytes with six bits a piece, that's 12. And then the first byte or the initial byte has four bits left over for the data. So that's 16. If it can't be represented in 16 bits, we have to go to the next level, which is the four bits, right? Excuse me, the four bytes, right? And so with four bytes, you've got three bytes that have six bits a piece. And then you have the one initial byte with the three bits. So we have three times six, 18 bits, plus three, that's 21 bits. So we can represent from 17 bits up to 21 bits. Now you, now you don't represent something with more bytes than it's needed. So for example, if I've got something that requires 13 bits to be represented, then you just represent it with three bytes, which goes up to 16. You don't represent it with four bytes because that would be one byte excess in excess all right so there you go how do we decode UTF-8 well there was a little example right there